Hey, what's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. Now, today's video is going to be a little less structured than usual, so I apologize if it is a little all over the place. It's basically a bit of a rant or a discussion. I just want to bring up a topic of conversation that I don't hear as much anymore in the Dying Light community. Now, I just made a video which should hopefully be up on the channel right now, so I recommend watching that. But in that video, I go over a Reddit AMA with the franchise director, Timon Smektawa, where he answers a heap of awesome questions about the future of the franchise and the direction of Dying Light 2. Now, I don't want to spoil too much, so go watch that video. I will link it down below. But there was one thing in that thread that was not mentioned at all. I did see two questions, at least, that touched on the subject, but they were either submitted too late to receive an answer, or Timon just skipped them altogether. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not entirely sure. But let's talk about why I honestly believe that for Dying Light 2 to survive the way that the first game did, it needs B the zombie. <laughs> So why do people come back to Dying Light and continue to play it even after they've beaten the story? People such as myself, for example, would beat the game multiple times, they'd get every achievement, every easter egg, collect the most overpowered weapons, glitch unlimited resources, hit max legend level, everything. But we'd keep coming back to the game because the parkour and the combat was just so good. It was literally just a sandbox of climbing, jumping, and slicing zombies to bits, and while the second game did fall short in some aspects compared to the first. After all the updates, the parkour and combat is arguably better in Dying Light 2. Now I think the second game definitely scratches that itch for the combat and the parkour, and with the legend levels being so incredibly hard to level without glitches or exploits, you do have something to work towards when you play it. But Dying Light 1 allowed players to not only put all of their gear and their items to use in a PvP game mode, but it also meant that there was now a purpose to learning all the movement tech and being able to parkour better than other players. I think that the duplication glitches became more vital as players would do UVs and make PvP super hard for the zombie player, which you can argue wasn't fair or good for the game, but the zombie players knew all of this and they would play around it by utilizing their spits and their abilities to counteract these strengths. Just the existence of that game mode made being good at a single player story game feel so much better. Your talent in a game that required little to no skill to play and enjoy actually had a place where it could be utilized. Now, I remember very, very early on in Dying Light when I first tried the Be The Zombie game mode and there was this one guy I went up against who would absolutely destroy me. But not only did he destroy me every time we fought, he actually killed me with only drop kicks. Please! Jesus Christ. I kid you not, this guy would kick me off a building into a spike wall and I was in absolute disbelief. I would have been around 16 or 17 years old at the time and it absolutely blew my mind how good some of these players were. Now don't get me wrong, I don't think Techland should copy paste the game mode straight into Dying Light 2. While the game mode could probably work in Old Villador, the city would be insanely fun to zip around in as a night hunter, but balancing that one might be very difficult. I do think Techland should take what they've learned from Dying Light 1 and use it to make something completely new. Now it could be similar, but it could be different. Imagine a game mode that involved multiple zombies versus multiple survivors. You can make it super parkour and movement based and give these zombie players skill trees, unlockables, lots of things to work towards. They can even just rework the original Be The Zombie game mode to work with all the new parkour systems, gliders, verticality, and all the new weapons. Like imagine gliding through the sky only to get tackled by a night hunter, maybe a hundred meters up in the sky, maybe even higher. I just remember being able to enjoy the core game with your friends and then have another player unknown to you just invade you as a zombie in the most inconvenient of times. It was absolutely thrilling. I remember you'd have to drop everything you were currently doing and work together as a team to beat the zombie. It was super sweaty, terrifying, and competitive. Now I'd argue a game like Call of Duty has less content than Dying Light, but you can put infinitely more time into a game like Call of Duty because it's infinitely replayable something I think Dying Light 2 is missing. A PvP game mode where you play to win and unlock rewards by winning offers far more than side missions, bounties, etc. Because the satisfaction of winning against another real person never gets old. And the feeling of improving at the game and the functions as you do win is even more amazing. 
I think a fantastic example is this video here by JKM that he posted a few weeks ago. The video is titled, What 700 Hours of Dying Light 2 Looks Like. Now I would label JKM as a really high skilled Dying Light 2 player, and you can tell that by watching the video. But what does this achieve? Being able to get from point A to point B faster and more skilled than someone else literally achieves nothing besides being more impressive to viewers or enjoying the parkour yourself, I guess. Now imagine if a PvP game mode existed in some form, JKM would be an absolute beast with all of this parkour ability, being able to outplay the other players through skill alone. I believe this is missing in Dying Light 2 and would create infinitely more replayability for not only players but for content creators, casual and competitive, doesn't matter, even just groups of friends. I used to invade my friends in the original Dying Light all the time and we could spend up to 5 hours at a time just cycling through who got to play as the zombie and invade the other group. Not to mention the entire time we'd be leveling up and unlocking abilities and gear as the zombie and the survivor as we played. Now we all know that there is a new DLC on the horizon and from the concept art and the leaks it does seem to suggest a completely new environment and map just like the following for Dying Light 1. Now this could be a perfect opportunity for a PvP game mode to be introduced. The less elevation means a more balanced playing field, forests and swamps mean the game would be more terrifying in an invasion style matchmaking system, and while some may disagree, I think that introducing a PvP mode behind this expansion is a way of getting more funding without just locking the game mode behind a paywall, since you're technically paying for the DLC and not the game mode by itself. Of course the game mode would bring in the most players if it was free, but if Techland requires funding, I really wouldn't mind dropping a couple bucks on this if it means it'll help the devs push out more content in the future. Now the reason I say this is because Timon was asked in the AMA if we can expect future expansions after DLC 2, and he replied with something like, yeah maybe if you guys want it though, and obviously we want it, but what I think he meant was if enough people are actually going to pay for the DLCs, they will keep pushing them out, which leads me to believe that not as many people are purchasing or playing bloody ties as they had of hoped, and they might be having doubts about future purchases for their future expansions. I don't actually know that, it's just an estimate. But basically to sum it all up, I think this game needs some replayable game mode that involves other players and some sort of progression system. It needs rewards, it could even be cosmetics, that's completely fine. Prestiging your Night Hunter to get cooler visual appearances in the first game was enough for most players to sink 10 to 20 to 30 plus hours into the PvP alone. Not to mention how insanely fun it was knowing that all these survivors you are terrorizing are in fact real players in their own real worlds with their own gear, weapons, and skills. Nobody cares about parkour time trials, nobody cares about bounties and challenges, and nobody cares how good you are at killing PvE AI volatiles. PvP gives Techland an excuse to patch glitches, and it gives players more reason to seek them out. It does sound dumb, but bugs and glitches are part of the franchise's identity, whether the Techland likes that or not, and that's never going to change. Give players a reason to upgrade their weapons and utilize half the skills that are otherwise completely useless. Make nighttime even scarier by offering players the option of being invaded and terrorized by other real players in an optional and balanced PvP game mode. Techland, if you're actually listening, this could be the one thing that Dying Light 2 needs to survive the next couple years, and I don't know if you understand that. People like OzzyGG were still playing the Be The Zombie game mode six to seven years after the game released, and plenty of people were still there for that content. If you looked at the numbers before the last Dying Light 2 update, Dying Light 1 actually had more players playing it, which isn't a good sign for a sequel. Now I might be absolutely waffling, who knows, but it is the one thing I want for this game, and I do feel like until it happens, the game will forever be incomplete.